This is Twit. But I have a tub under my desk of beanies and hats. <laughs> beanies and hats. All right. You ready to get this thing started, man? Yeah. Yeah, let's right. do it. This is going to be good. So this this week's critique topic was, what was it? I don't know. What was it? Nostalgic. <laughs> you As know you what it is. you can see down there in my cleverly made graphic. Over there. <laughs> oh, you know, I had you covered up. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nostalgia in big. That's my favorite font, by the way. That is my favorite font. Um, what is that font? It is uh, not Futura. Modern. Oh, I gotta look it up now because now it's gonna kill me. Uh, I only use okay. fonts that Kira says I'm allowed to use. So she would. This would be a, a Kira approved font. I'm telling you, this is uh, Euro style. Yeah, Euro style. That's one of my favorite fonts. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. Um, yeah, uh, low base guy. No, there are no tags on the stream. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wingdings. <laughs> Wingdings. Yeah, no, Comic Sans is actually for the intellectual amongst us. Comic Sans all the way. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. Wingdings is like code. You could send stuff in code in Wingdings and then somebody has to have that font loaded. <sighs> Oh man. So folks, you should know just before we get started this my my adventure uh up until right now. So like the night before I do any kind of stream, I had actually two things scheduled this morning to do. First one was with uh our good friend and member Stephen Sharf. We we're going to do an interview at 11 a.m. this morning. I had to push that off to Wednesday because of Comcast. Thank you Comcast. Uh, which which means this stream may end early because I'm talking crap about him. <laughs> 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 it's like Comcast sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm paying for Comcast business class and I'm barely getting, you know, like Botswana hut class inter internet over oh, here. It awesome. is horrible. It is horrible. It's just it's just it's it's fast when it's up. It's it's you know, I get, you know, a hundred and something up and you know, maybe half that no, a hundred something down and maybe half that up. Uh, but the problem with anything like this is consistency, right? It's like, it's like I, I was talking to him on the phone because I was, as I was telling my friend Joseph, photo Joseph, I was in uh, Sam Jackson mode with him. <laughs> so I was like, I went into straight up Sam Jackson mode. I was like, how, from, how, from Blade? you know, it's, no, from uh, well, that's Pulp, Wesley Fiction. Snipe. Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. Say what sorry. again? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sorry you feel that way, Mr. Johnson. Uh, no, but it was like, I told him, it's like, imagine if you, like, I work on the internet. I'm like, imagine if you had a car that you had to rely on to get to work every day, and some days just rambly didn't start. <laughs> Wouldn't that be yeah, frustrating? Just, <laughs> it's like, just for no it reason. It was somebody else's fault. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry you feel that. That's the worst, man. It's just the worst, the worst yeah. uh, way to deal with somebody of my temperament, you know, at that point in the day is with condescension. Like, <laughs> this is the Apologize worst. once. That's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. No, no. That hollow apology of I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, oh, it just gets out of uh, my that, tail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah yeah that, that just killed oh, me Ginger that, that says, or it starts or yeah. it starts and the engine cuts out every two miles you know i had that happen on my truck i bought my i have a 2001 dodge diesel and after about uh 15 000 miles i'd be driving and it would just shut off and then i'd have to float over to the side and wait a few minutes it took three months to figure out what it was mm, um man. and thanks to the internet uh, and posting in all these forums, somebody came up with the idea that it was my um, my e my what is it uh, my ECM, which is the uh, electronic control module. But I was out of warranty until some brilliant guy said, "Oh no! In the Dodge manual, it caused an, an emissions control module, which are warrantied longer." So I was able to get that repaired. But I know the feeling of when things just stop working. <sighs> Man, 
especially when you like you've you've like prepared i like to be prepared right i'm all set like i get to talk to steven sharp we're gonna have a great conversation about photography i'm all set <laughs> and then like it was like 20 minutes before i'm all you know i got all my stuff in order because i'm you know sort of rain man that way of everything has to be like right in the right spot ready to go and right. boop you know, and then, you know, of course, you look like an unprofessional person because you're moving a meeting that close to the meeting time and all that. So, so sorry, Stephen <laughs> Scharf. I know you're watching. I see you in the chat. So oh, oh, anyway, that's my pain. But enough about me. Nostalgia is the topic du jour of the day. We got some pretty good uh, submissions this this week. What did you think? We have a lot of good submissions. I, I love uh, all of the black and white and sepia and old school color. I'm looking at them now. A couple uh, grungy borders. That's great. I love mm -hmm. it. I didn't. I didn't expect all these good. All these good things. It's cool. Yeah. No, it's really good. Hey, your camera looks really interesting. You got like a nice moray thing going on there. Are you using one of your infrared modified it's, cameras or something? It's Comcast. It must be Comcast. <laughs> It is. Man, everything. Comcast is the new El Nino. We'll just bring, blame everything on Comcast. <laughs> Why is your Dude, as, as, as As you know, as anybody that streams, the low base guy in here, you know, like you can, you can have everything perfect, everything tested to be perfect, everything dialed in, and you hit the go button, and your video looks like crap. Your audio is out of sync. Your microphone disconnects. Your internet that. goes down. Like... <sighs> You know, the guy next door decides to cut down his tree. Like, you oh, know, that's, you my, know. that's my it, life. Yeah, yeah. All of my neighbors, they, they rotate making noise. So it's just like, oh, you got a chainsaw today. Oh, you hit <laughs> the dirt bike with no muffler today. Nice. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just, I don't know. I'm sounding more and more like a cantankerous old man, and I'm okay with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, coming, I'm coming to... I'm coming to realize that the that the cantankerous old guys wasn't wasn't just because they were grumpy for no reason. It was because there were so many straws put on that camel's back that they just realized, like, you know what? <laughs> Enough. 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 Done. Yeah. yeah I made it yeah. this far and I gotta put up with this stuff. All right, cool, man. Let's dive into this week's critique. Let me see if I can't bring it up because yeah. Oh, good. It showed up. I was like, half of me was digging like, uh, was it uh, Rick in the chat was talking about Murphy. And I'm like, yeah, if I try to go to the screen share, it's going to show something else because I didn't have a chance to double check everything. <laughs> before we went by. But it's working. Look, everything is working. Let's make that a little wider. All right. And we'll turn off of this view. Show bookmarks. There we go. OK, cool. So let's dive in. I'm going to go into the uh, photo critique topic inside of Twit Pro. Uh, oh, sorry. Look at me. I'm the one that changed everything. I'm like, where's I'm, the photo I'm critique? Not, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to sit here and watch. <laughs> watch me flail <laughs> as I try to figure out my own site. I love it. All right. Let's go to date created and get started. All right. Hey, how did your thing with Michael Rhino go? I know you did your presentation a couple days ago. It, yeah, that was, that was, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I can't keep track. Yeah, yeah it yeah, went really yeah. good. It was, it was fun. They were a great group. Yeah, it went really well. Um, two hours flew by. So, nice. yeah, it's good. Very cool. All right. Well, first shot is Michael Rhino. Michael, Michael, Michael. Next, let me read his caption real quick. Cool shot. He says, <clears throat> if these walls could talk, my entry for the nostalgia theme is this photo of a very old building near Crested Butte, Colorado. Butte, Colorado. Oh, very Look nice. It looks like a painting. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I really, I really like that. I love these. I love these old buildings and these these scenes. Um, I, I want to be there. Like I, these are things that I want to walk through. Like right now, this is the time. I'm going up to Mammoth for a week. Uh, there's going to be snow, so we're not even sure if we can get out to go to like Bodie and okay. Mono Lake. But um, I hope to I hope to be able to create some of my own imagery of outside. But I, but I do, I do love this. I think that uh, in the nostalgic category, the the barn itself fits pretty well. I think some, you know, some toning for me, like we'll see in some of the other images, would feel more nostalgic, right? Because it it that sort of film look. Um, but as far as the, 
Sorry about that. But you changing your lights? <laughs> I was turning what? off my like... fan. I had to turn off my fan, man. <laughs> you can do that on your phone. You know that, right? Like... I know I can, but you know, it's one day. Okay. <laughs> uh, but Michael, I love this shot. Um, I would, I would suggest though that when you have these opportunities to uh, shoot with a wider piece of glass or shallower depth of field to push the mountains away because you have so much compression going on in here and the mountain is equally as in focus as the barn um and and that just that just doesn't give me a lot of depth and there's no foreground so it's so tight to the bottom and the side yeah yeah i agree yeah just a little bit a little bit of space in there and michael ryan i'll know when when i did the critique for his group that was that was one of the things that i talked about a lot was adding a little bit of space around around the the main subject of the image and one of the analogies that I drew was, and this kind of worked for me, and I think I think some military instructor told me this, photography instructor told me this back in the day, that you imagine the sides of the frame as being magnetic. And if you get something too close to them, it starts pulling towards that side, you know, you're, you're right. so you need to leave a little bit of space there so it doesn't get attracted by the magnetism, the visual magnetism. So. Yeah, and and I think if you look at if you look at artists like Ansel Adams, um, there's not only an intention in the tonal range, but in the composition and space around everything. And it's it's a long topic to go into, but you know, I have a feeling like I want to walk around this barn, <clears throat> but in the frame, it's so tight, I don't know that I can. Right, so I feel I right. feel restrained. Yeah. Yep. What about the toning of this image? Would you like you you mentioned that you would kind of old timey tone it a little bit, but does it need color at all in this? We we often talk about that black and white versus color, and does color add to the to the the overall intent of the image? Here, do you think it's it's supporting or detracting? I think it's supporting. Um, I think that if we went black and white, it's going to go very flat. Um, there's no light on the barn. There's actually more light behind the barn on the hill. So I feel like, you know, yellows and greens tend to go the same uh, if you just desaturate them. Had you shot this in infrared, there would be a lot more separation. But currently, I think the color helps. Mm. Very cool. Awesome. Cool shot. I like it. Thank you, Michael Reno. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Next up is Mark Charette. Mark Charette says, my first spoken words on tape I inherited. Let's bring this up so I can see what he said. In its oh, wow. entirety, <clears throat> I inherited my father's old reel to reel when he passed away, and who would have known it? But he'd recorded what may be the first things I ever said. I guess that makes it makes me the analog kid. That is really cool to have your first words recorded. That is nuts. That's yeah, nice yeah, which is which is unusual, you know, depending on your age group, which is unusual for us, right? Yeah. Because it wasn't it wasn't easy, and like. Uh, when when I had when we had our daughter, it was it was expensive to have you know video audio recorders on hand, so mm -hmm. that's very cool. I really yeah. like it. I'm just yeah, that is really cool. I like the shot too. I like the the grunge of the the buttons on the reel to reel. If anybody if anybody is listening to this has experience with reel to reel, um, you know how fragile it is and how you know weaving it through all those pulleys the correct way and. You know, if it heats up, then it distorts the audio or it'll break if it becomes too brittle and you got to figure out how to splice it together with some scotch tape. And yeah, it was a it was a tactile experience, we'll say. Right. Yeah. I never work with reel to reel, um, but I can imagine yeah. what that was like. Yeah. My nice dad composition. Used to bias these. He used to bias these little reel to reel. My brother and I used to bias these little reel to reel. Uh, recorders and we do our little radio shows way back in the day on um, them and like commentary with two two uh, two news people recording ourselves back and forth. It was fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I have I have tons of of uh, when, once I got a cassette recorder, I have tons of tape of nothing but embarrassing content that I generated when I was like sixteen. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's all digitized. I have it. I could play something now, but we won't. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Did you, uh, were yeah. you the kid that used to make um, mixtapes for Margie back in the day? <laughs> oh, huge. I, yeah, I was a huge, I still have all my mixtapes. I have a case of like 128 tapes I used to carry in my truck. Oh, I still wow. have them. 
Yeah, <laughs> and I have all the deck recorders and the duplicator, the tape duplicators, and oh yeah, I still have all of it. <laughs> one of these you days, I'll take her. Up. You should take her on a date and, and pop one of those tapes in there. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, yeah. It'll sound, I don't even know how he could play it. I don't have anything yeah, to play right. it in. It, it's right. You're right. It's like, why are you playing the theme to St. Elmo's Fire? I don't understand. <laughs> right. No, no, no. Uh, cool shot, though. I like the detail. You know, back to the photo. I like the detail in this shot. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot I would change. Maybe dive in a little bit. I know you would say if I know if I know Troy Miller, you would say there's a trap in the lower left hand corner of this shot. And you would maybe de-emphasize that a little bit or crop in to get rid of it. But I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't bother me too much. The the shallow depth of field is extreme and that knob that's in the foreground is out of focus and then it kind of brings us into the pulley structure and then we fall out of focus again. I may have pushed in a little bit to make that less as part of the hero of the shot, but other than that, I, I dig it. I think it's a it's, it definitely fits the theme of nostalgia. Yeah, and I, I do I do really like the composition. I'm not a big fan of the corners that like you mentioned, and I feel like the subject the within this frame is that is that wheel because it's 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 more in the center, it's more sharp than anything else, and I feel like I wish that it was the buttons that were more prominent and everything else kind of fell out so i mean but but it tells an amazing story we can see the reels which i appreciate i can see the buttons the knobs the tape so it draws us in i i really like it i i hope that this is something that mark prints and hangs on his wall you know mm -hmm. and titles it like my first words or something but yeah it's it's yeah. a great image you know what would be cool with this shot you know there's a, a there's a demo that actually i'm working on for the that final cut pro event i'm speaking at um but when you marry still photographs with video or audio so that you and I think I showed this to you a long time ago, you may not remember, but you can aim your with this app, you aim your your phone at a photo and it will do sort of uh, image recognition on it, scan it. And then in augmented VR, replace what it sees for that photo in the frame and play a video clip. So for something like this, he could do something similar where it basically plays his first words, right? You could title it right. and then aim the camera at it and then it just starts speaking the first words. That'd be that'd be really interesting. Yeah, that would be very cool. That could be very cool. Yeah, take yeah. the media a little bit further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not, right? Very cool. All right. Well, thank you, Mark Charette. Appreciate that, a.k.a. WorkPix. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Next shot up is from Raphael Timber Geek Swift. He says... Bring this up. All right, I'm not reading all that. Uh, he says, Moondog House, <laughs> March 8th, 2016. Uh, I'll read the first paragraph. He says, nostalgic for me uh, in many ways. This submission answers the member mixer question of where I was sitting in the far corner of that portion of the foundation that has no frame oh, on okay. it. Um, you guys can read the rest of that on the in the community. Yeah, so wow, he built his house, man. See, Joy, I think nice. I think he might have you beat in the, uh, you know, who we would go to to lead us in the zombie apocalypse area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is pretty impressive. He could build the shelter for sure. I could help him. <laughs> yeah. um, I've built plenty of things like this. This is very cool. I, I love that. I I just I love that space too. So it's a lot of fun. I'm glad to that we get to kind of see where where he was and and where that started. I love that. Yeah, that's nice. and I won't mention that it's leaning to the right. I won't mention that. Wait, the photo itself or the structure? <laughs> it, it's, I don't know. <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope that it's not that the, the camera's not level and the structure's leaning. Well, this this looks exceptionally well built. I'm gonna guess that he would build a leaning yeah. st leaning structure of Timber Geek. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think theme. of the photo? The photo overall on its on its merits as a nostalgic shot. Well, I think it's a fun shot. I think it's a snapshot that captures history, and um, I love that as much as I like you know a heavily edited artistic image. I like the the record of time without the manipulation. You know what I mean? Like if, mm -hmm. if we were to say, oh, we need to rotate it and sharpen it and dodge and burn and increase saturation and do all those things. Well, then it's not really a true or a more true representation of the of the time period. So I like that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very cool. All right. Thank you, Timber Geek. Appreciate that. 
Next shot up is from Stephen Scharf. Stephen says, nothing better than hanging with my homies. All right. Let's see if we can't pick Stephen Scharf out of this this shot here. I don't right. see one yeah. that reminds yeah. me of Stephen. <laughs> I think, Steven, I think not Stephen's the, the guy. <laughs> yeah, Stephen's the guy with the beanie and the Modelo. That's 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 Stephen right there. That's Stephen. That's Stephen. <laughs> Showing like a it. villain. <laughs> This is a cool shot, though. This is definitely gotcha. And, of course, he accentuates it with the sloppy border. And I was going to ask you about that. So with the, we, you and I joke back and forth about borders a lot, sloppy borders, etc. This one, he brought it in deeply, right? He's got a lot of white space mm-hmm. around the edge of this and then mm-hmm. the sloppy border. Does that work here? I mean, is that is it? Because for me, like in my head, I'm like, man, you're just giving away all those pixels. This could been, that could have been image data right there. Why are we just replacing it with white? Or am I just looking at it wrong and, and it's it's serving to guide me into the image more? I, you know, I think it works. I think, you know, negative space is valuable space, right? Even though there might not be any content in there. So having having space on your image that doesn't have any pixels of, of the image storytelling is still valuable, right? I mean, if, if you take an image like this and you were to, to squeeze it down into a little little corner and yet all that negative white space around it, that's that somehow tells a story. And it's an it's a representation. So for me, I, I like this. It also harkens back to the old Polaroids, which yeah. they had huge white space around them. So for sure. For it, sure. it feels nostalgic. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Polaroids had that huge thick white border on them and the big chin as well. Mm-hmm. The right stuff mm-hmm. on. Yeah. 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 I dig it. Yeah, yeah. this is cool. This is a cool shot. Okay, what about the the shot itself on the the you know the nostalgic sort of feel? Stephen gave it a black and white with a kind of a wash of sepia on it. Um, we've got a little bit of a shallow depth of field. Our our guy in the far left there is falling off a little bit intentionally. It looks like. Um, I'm wondering who our subject is, or is our subject all of these guys? I, I think for me, I think the the subject is the whole frame. It's really storytelling of a moment, you know, more of a think of it like a photojournalistic ex- expression, like you're walking by. Here's what I see in the scene. Um, I do love the the fact that the guy on the far right is looking up at the camera and everybody else kind of doesn't care. So, yeah, I, I yeah. like it. I like the treatment. I think the treatment's great. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool. Really cool shot. All right. Yeah, and work picks as the wall is a frame in its own right too. In some cases, you know, with the graffiti and all that. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, some of me, part of me, wants to see the color in that art behind them. I think that image would be very, very busy in color. Yeah, you might lose them in there. Yeah. yeah. All right, Stephen Sharp. Thank you for that. Ooh, look at this one. Armando Brook. He says, this old machine's still running, uh, connecting Sao Paulo to small cities, but with a tourist purpose. Cool. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that's stunning. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And this is, you know, this is a very timeless type of image. There's really nothing in here that makes me think that it could be the 20th century. I mean, this could have been, you know, the, the early 1900s or something like, you know. Other than maybe the logo on his shirt would give it away, but but I, I really like it. Yeah. I, yeah, I like how the, I he it, it looks like he, he intentionally has drawn us to the nose of this um of this engine there. Cause that's where I look first. I mean, obviously we look at words and numbers first, so that two fifteen is drawing me into that, and then my eye line kind of falls down the path of the engine and then down, oh, there's guys doing something there and they're working on it, and then I get kind of get lost in the sky. It's kind of the flow there, which right. like is intentional. Yeah, I mean, I love the I love the image and, and I like the treatment. I like the black and white treatment. I, I do think that the perspective that it was shot at is is a little challenging in that, you know, we're cutting off the headlight on the train just a little bit. That's easily fixed by just, you know, a little rotation of the camera counterclockwise and half a step to the left. So we don't have so much negative space going down the rails that we actually have more of the train. You know, you could still keep the guys isolated against the dirt, which I think is important because you would lose them against the busyness of the train. But but looking through the camera, just a quick step to the left and a rotate counterclockwise would do a lot for this image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I like it, though. Very cool. It reminds me of the the train museum in Sacramento that Tim Ingalls shoots at a lot. 
Really yeah. Nice. Yeah. There's a lot of cool train. Yeah. There's a lot of cool train places. Yeah. Hey, you want to, <clears throat> excuse me, give your public service announcement for not shooting on train tracks? Cause <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot on train tracks it's illegal and it's unsafe <laughs> there you go Moving train right tracks away. are private property of yes, the railroad yeah. and it's unsafe and did and i mention it's hurt, really hurt a lot unsafe? of photographers and it's hurt a lot of photographers right? <laughs> <clears throat> it has yeah it has um it's it's no joke i i have a, a building down here that i can photograph that they have some decommissioned tracks <clears throat> and even a train station <clears throat> museum in paris that i can photograph at I never post those on social media mm. just because I don't want to perpetuate the idea of, you know, photograph on the tracks. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. I mean, that is almost a cliche for wedding photographers to shoot brides and grooms hanging out on tracks or walking down the tracks or hanging out on an old engine or something. Right. Hey, they're leading lines, man. It's in repeating patterns, <clears throat> whether you yeah. want to follow rules or not. Everybody loves that. Yeah. Well, yeah. All right, Armando, thank you very much, sir. Next up is Nora Zanotnis. Uh, a hill, snow pants, and your gang. <laughs> this looks like our gang, doesn't it? <laughs> Little rough. I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever read the words snow pants. I don't I don't think I've ever read that or said them out loud, so <laughs> you, oh, really? Oh, no. You're from for you you come from Indiana, right? Aren't you like then you don't you hail from that state? <clears throat> yeah, but I don't think I've ever said or read the word snow pants. I like it. That's one of my You've new favorite them, word though. combinations. You've worn snow pants. Come on. You have worn snow pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I used to love my snow pants. My snow outfit was like, when I suited up with that thing on, it literally felt like I was going out onto the moon because it was like a onesie. It was like a onesie, but it was completely insulated. And you put your beanie on and your gloves and your big, thick boots. It always felt like I was getting ready to go out into outer space. <clears throat> yeah i don't snow. know i don't remember i remember we used to build igloos was... <laughs> yeah Snowball i was probably fights. i was probably too young for most of that but um i love nora shot I, I i dig the fact that we got these two kids that are standing there um the others are playing and then the one kid in the middle which really is the is actually you know the lighter outfit and everything draws our attention is looking at the camera yeah and that's just that's just so wonderful and there's even a little blur motion blur in the in the kid getting ready to go down the hill in his right foot so i i dig that i dig that yeah it's very nice we have a little bit of a trap there in the upper left though a little black hole trap it's a little dark yeah i i think it's been burned down a little bit too much i think that it would be okay to leave some of that detail in there i mean we just really want a vignette just enough to draw our attention you know, to the center. So, so it should be nice fall off, but it is a pretty heavy vignette, but. Mm -hmm. And if this is an old photo, you know, who, you know, the, it could have been an artifact of the camera that took this, which makes it part of the nostalgia of the overall shot. So it, at that point it becomes a compositional element because it's like, yeah, you remember that old, sh the old camera we had that used to make the upper <laughs> left hand corner dark all the time. <laughs> Yeah, but you know that it wouldn't do that. <laughs> right, right. Film, yeah. It's not, a film camera is not going to overexpose. It's going to underexpose with light leak. So you're going to get, you know, all kinds of weirdness. Right, right. I, I guess, I guess you would get some, yeah, you might get some darkening in there, but. Yeah, if it was light leak, it would overexpose. But, or yeah, depending, it's or film. if it was processed that way, you know, it could have been a light leak in the dark room for all we know. Right? <laughs> so. Or heavy-handed burning. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That was the whole thing about processing and printing by hand. You could never... It was very hard to repeat, right? Especially day-to-day. -day. Oh, yeah. Like if someone said, yeah, we need, we need 10 8x10s of this shot. The first 8x10 is going to be different than the last 8x10 just because you're human and the time and the exposure are different and the chemistry changes over time. So you'd never have an exact right. print from start to finish, which is kind, right. kind of the yeah, magic I, of the whole thing. I used to do a lot of production printing in my darkroom. So, yeah, I still have my notebooks of my notes of images I printed. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, you used to write notes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That stuff. Miss that. Let me bring that back. Nah. <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nora, thank you for that. 
All right. Our next shot is from Eric Pronsky. He says, uh, 1951 Pontiac 8 image taken at the Blue Swallow Motel along the old historic Route 66 in Tucumcari, New Mexico. All right. Look at that. Nice. That, nice. I mean, this I, is, I this love is the... classic nostalgia. You almost feel what it's like there. You almost expect to see a poodle skirt, someone in a poodle skirt come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I love the, I love the multicolored sign and the 100% refrigerated air <clears throat> as, as opposed to what? <laughs> <laughs> Only 50% refrigerated, <laughs> which would make it just warm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Then this have like a, a an American graffiti kind of feel to it, right? It does, yeah. Um, I I do enjoy. It. I I do think that the the building on the left hand side could be burned down because mm -hmm. it's really drawing us out of the frame there. You know, um, burn that down, bring that wall down, and I and I think that it becomes a lot lot stronger. Yeah. I do like the long exposure there. I mean, well, was this a long exposure? Maybe not. I mean, a longer than normal exposure, I guess. Um, yeah, there's the streaks Starburst in the road. Of that light. Yeah, yeah, we've got streaks. Yeah, this is a long exposure. And we've got these yeah. streaks on the light, the point light sources in there, which is really cool. Yeah, I, I love the coloring. And it's a little bit, I don't know if it's an intentional effect to soften the image a little bit. Um I'm not sure if I love that or not. I'm kind of debating, you know, whether mm -hmm. whether I like that. Um, you think he's, is there enough space around here, like this this bottom tire here? Are we are we too close to the frame, or is that okay in this I, context? I'm not a fan of really tight images unless there's a <clears throat> a specific mood purpose that you're trying to invoke, like you're trying to invoke the tension, or you're trying to invoke that you know I'm trapped inside the space. And we have so much space behind the, the car we could crop off. And yet below and to the right, we need to add some space. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree. Oh, huh. all right. And this was Eric Pronsky. Thank you, sir. Moving right along. Karen Sweeney's up next. Karen, Karen says the nostalgia of a tall ship on the Clyde. Uh, this is our Nikon D850 with a 24 to 120 at 48 millimeter, 1 60th of a second, F8 ISO 64, shot with a CPL attached and edited in Affinity Photo. Look at that. Awesome. That, that is yeah, that's really interesting. Cool. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Pops right out of there. My favorite colors in this shot. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is very cool. Um, oh, is that a, Right away, I'm like, is that a dust spot on my screen or on the photo? It's on the photo. Weird. Right at 9 o'clock. Right on the edge. Oh. Yeah. So on the on the left, on the left half of the image. Oh, I see it. Okay. Um, yeah, right above the right above the buildings. Yeah, um, I, I love the reflection in the composition. I think that's I think that's super cool. Um unfortunately, like in this category for nostalgic or nostalgia, um, the buildings and the architecture, I think, in the background kind of take away from the ship itself, especially that very modern architecturally shaped building on the right, you know, with all those, all those angles, I think it's interrupting the, interrupting the ship a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of takes you out of it a little bit, but I like how the ship right. pops out of there. Like it's like the, it's the background is intentionally pushed back and the ship is intentionally brought forward. Um, those buildings on the left, like this, this building here, that it's an irregularly shaped building so it is it's making me interested to see more of that building which is taking me away from the subject so yeah i would have i would have probably cropped it maybe right here to get rid of that i still want to see the buildings in the background because yeah. those are part of the overall but this one here takes me out a little bit so I probably would have cropped right there um i'm okay with the spacing around this image i love the reflection of it down here uh, and I like the fact that it has some place to go, even though it's stationary, it has some place to go right. into the frame. This jagged building is interesting back there, but yeah, it, it it's taken me away from the boat a little bit, but what are you going to do? <laughs> it was there. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, not, not all images are going to fulfill every, you know, everything that you want it to be. I do like the fact that the light 
is really on the boat, whether that was mm -hmm. the way that the natural environment was or, um, you know, through post processing manipulation a little bit, it, it does really draw us out. So yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job with that. Very nice. Karen Sweeney. Thank you. All right. Ginger bearding is up next. Uh, let's read what ginger bearding says. A <clears throat> uh, little trip down memory lane. These are uh, a couple of negative frames from a trip we did through the north eastern USA in 1992. That's 13 year old me in both photos. If you can make it out, uh, you can wow. read the rest of that. Let's bring the shot up. All right, that's a 13 year old ginger bearding in there. Look at that. <laughs> nice, nice. What that is, is this? great. Kodak, Kodak 400, yeah. Yeah. So those are color. Yeah, yeah. Those were color negatives. Yep. Okay, so we converted them to, to black and white and then inverted them. Okay. <clears throat> um, I love the, I love, I love the shot. I mean, I love this whole idea of seeing the images within the negatives and being real negatives of, you know, somebody's real life experiences and, and uh, that's that's really good, really well done. A um, little bright in the top right corner could could definitely bring that down and not hurt anything because there's just a reflection in there, or maybe and, it's just a photo of a thing that has a reflection. <laughs> right. And now that you say that, I'm looking at this and I'm like, is this was this f okay? What he's saying in the chat, he said, yeah, the color is a mess due to the film degrading. Yeah, yeah, of course, because uh, I was wondering. Yeah, I didn't even think about what you said, Troy, because you said, yeah, this is a photo of a negative that's been inverted to make it into a positive for the shot. My brain instantly went to, oh, this is slide film, which is already positive, right? So I was like, oh, man, I kind of put it together. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I'd love to see the original, um, you know, color and then inverted. I, I, I don't think that it's a bad thing if if they look bad, right? I mean, it's this idea that you're representing the the product or the physical thing that's there and if if you over manipulate it then we lose the sense of the fact that these are old negatives and that they're beat up um so but i, I still i still i still really like the uh the process and and the vision i, I dig it this is really cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah it definitely fits a hundred percent smack on into the idea of nostalgia right uh, and the, you know, I mean, everything about this is nostalgia from the 13 year old ginger bearding to the, sh the cars in the left frame there to the fact that this is film, <laughs> you know, the whole thing is, is yeah. nostalgia. So well done. Very well done. Yeah. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah. Really, really good, um, representation of the topic too. Yeah. It's great. Yep. I can dig it. Dig All it. All right. James Glenny. Thank you, sir. Next shot up is from Amy Brooks. Self-portrait, morning of November 4th. Nostalgic for America. Yes, as we all are. Let's bring this shot up. All right, there we go. That's Amy. Look at that. Yeah, I you know, I I thought this was I thought this was really great. She was in the member mixer and she explained it a little bit. Um even even without her having to explain it, I get a I get a sense of what's going on. Um, I love the fact that the, the light is in her eye, whether, you know, Amy, whether you manipulated that or not, I love the fact you're drawing us into your eye. And I think that's, I think that's really important. And, um, you know, I appreciate the fact that, that, that you did this of yourself and you shared it with us with, with the community. And I think that's, I think that's really powerful. And I think that says a lot about, you know, our relationship virtually, if anything else. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it, it, it just the, the tight crop on this, it shows the emotion, you know, looking off into the distance and then the caption, you know, just November 4th. And if you know what November 4th was, you know, you kind of understand it just brings the whole thing home. So and it's and I yeah. think it's courageous to, to do a self portrait of yourself and put it in front of a community, um, especially yep. to illustrate such an emotional and polarizing topic. So really cool yeah and and i love the fact that this doesn't have any partisanship to it right like we don't we don't know what side you know she might be thinking of or both sides or no sides it's just it it speaks to everybody and i and i love the fact that it sort of transcend transcends those borders mm -hmm. yeah 
Very yep. nice. Very nice well job. done. Thank you, Amy. Nice job. All right. And next up is Michael Dre. Nostalgia or just history? Wet plate simulation. All right. Bring this up. All right. Look at that. <laughs> Have you ever been to yeah. one of these, these, uh, these reenactment type events? No. Me either. No, <laughs> I've, I've never have. And like, we used to have a big Renaissance fair, um, that I always wanted to go to, but I never, I never got to go. So I don't know. I, I think it would be cool. I mean, now I don't get to go out much, so I would go to anything pretty much. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, <laughs> so you don't see many black people at these kind of reenactment events. Man. No, <laughs> no, you saying. don't. That wasn't a good time to be reenacting and being and, and just being nostalgic no. about. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like, I ain't going over there. No. I am not going to that. No, no. this is um, cool. What do you think of the processing it, of this shot? I like the processing. I think the processing's great. I, I think the frame is a little tight on the bottom. You know, this is another one of those things where, you know we're responsible when we push the button and when we finalize our image and is there a reason that the bottom of the frame would be super tight the top of the frame would be loose the left is tighter than the right um but you know why do we why do we do that like what's our what's our intention with that mm -hmm. um a little bit of cropping i think would i think would help i i do love the fact that the guy on the left is just begging for somebody to clone in like a like a beer in his hand or a cigarette <laughs> in his fingers <laughs> to totally do you a know? Photoshop contest. What is the guy hand holding over there? Like a Sam Adams or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it just it just seems to me like he's like he's sitting there. He's like he's taking a break and you know like if this was in the period. Like we say, oh, he's holding the beer. But like, if this was in the period, like, what would he be holding there? You know, like his canteen, maybe or something. I don't know. His hand just yeah. feels like it's it needs to be it needs to be working. Um, yeah, yeah. Or holding that thing. What I, I don't even know what it's called. The thing that you use to to shove the gunpowder and the and the pellet down the the barrel of the gun. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever that I don't know. Is. <laughs> or don't something know. modern, like throw an iPhone in there or a drone or something. <laughs> But I like the shot, and I, and I think that this is one of those kind of images where we have to realize that because we don't really have a lot of foreground, and the shot with the long lens in the background, although it's soft, I like that we get separation. the 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 subjects are still competing with the tonality of the background, so mm. you know maybe a little bit of highlight dodging on their subjects to bring out the face, to bring out you know the uniforms a little bit more, um, give them a little bit more of a specular pop to separate yeah. from the background. Yeah, sure. and that's in the a cool chat, shot. Stephen, Stephen Sharp says the thing I was referring to is a powder, a powder horn, and low bass guy says ramrod. <laughs> so, all right, sure. See, whatever the words, the words we get to say, like powder horn and ramrod and snow pants. There you go. <laughs> Done. Done. Day is good. You got it. You got it. Find a way to work those three words into a sentence in your in your life today, and you win. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be able to use the term powder horn in your sentence without referring to twip. That's right. Powder horn and ramrod. You gotta use if you can use both of those in an everyday sentence with a stranger today. <laughs> you win. I was walking down the street with my ramrod in my snow pants shopping for a powder horn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, well, where's that party at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right michael deray once again thank you sir thank Excellent. you michael all right Always peter levshin old man with his caravan and truck nevada <laughs> in the <laughs> 50s what look at that uh, what is going on here this is not infrared <laughs> because this is nevada in the 50s what's going on in this shot you you probably have some some intimate knowledge of what's going on here what's happening well, I do because that's me. So wait, that's you? <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Wait, 
<laughs> that is you. That is Troy Miller sitting in the middle. Yeah. That's, that's like a scene from Breaking Bad or something. <laughs> I know. No, this is that um, abandoned mining town outside of Vegas. I, I can't pronounce it. I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know what the name is. It's east of Vegas. So there's a, a mining town. During WPPI, a lot of people go out there and photograph. There's like a crashed plane and a bunch of buses and and that stuff really out there. Cool. So. Yeah, that, it was hotter that than Sten cool. that day. I bet, yeah. man. It looks hot. I feel I, I'm hot. Just I'm sweating looking at it. That's crazy. Is this infrared? <laughs> this is not infrared though, because that sky is awfully yeah. dark. Is this infrared? Yep. Yep. It's okay. infrared. In, infrared will definitely help make the sky dark. Um, that's that's one of the big benefits of infrared. So when you have a boring sky or a blank sky, infrared is going to help push that down. Um, the the location is pretty cool so if you go there and look around you'll you'll find some pretty cool stuff um peter is just you know how peter is he shoots the scenes um this definitely needs cropped on the left hand side though yeah yeah but it's cool though i mean yeah, it definitely could be i literally thought this was a slice out of time you know i mean this the the vehicles obviously but there's nothing telltale in here uh, maybe the sunglasses on you, but you know, there's nothing that, that gives us <laughs> a sense of time stamp. This is cool. I like it. This one, this looks like a, an area. And like, and like, is this is this caravan and the truck? Are they like permanently there, or was this there just for like temporarily? Mm -hmm. No, they're they're permanently there. Um, the, the, this whole area was like an old mining town. And it got abandoned a long time ago, and now it's like a tourist attraction. You can go there, and you can pay, and you can walk around and photograph all the crazy stuff, and walk inside all the, all of the things. And um, a lot, it's really cool. A lot of people go there and photograph with models. And That's what I was I'm trying, say. I'm desperately this looks trying like a to model. look it up. This looks like a model location for sure. I could see Craig Colvin going out there and just rocking it. Yeah, somebody knows Rick, what Rick it is. Rick Kilboy says it's, Nelson. Is it Nelson, Nevada? Rick Kilboy in the chat. You know what? It's um, it's off of the 93 on the uh, east of Vegas. So you leave Vegas and you take the the is it the 93 or the 90? Oh, it's the 95. Crap. Maybe I'll find it. Yeah, find it. It's off the one. Oh, I know where it is. Okay, yeah, it's off the 95 and the 165, past Mersha Reservoir, and it has a weird name. Share that, share a link to that location or, or a website or something uh, in the chat here and in the uh, in Twit Pro on this image so that folks that can go to it if they want. Yeah, I got to find the name. I got to okay. find the name. All right. Let's see if we can get out of that. Peter Levshin. Thank you, sir. All right, and who's next? Joshua Summerfelt. Joshua says, some stuff I found in an old bag. Shot with his Canon EOS RP with a Sigma 150 millimeter F2.8 macro at 150. Um, the F-stop was F13 at 1 200th of a second, ISO 400. That's a lot of numbers, but we all know what every single yeah. one of those numbers I rattled off means. <laughs> yeah, that's nostalgia right there. Fuji crew. Yeah, you know. I never shot. I never shot a lot of Fuji Chrome. Um, Neither. Only I, Velvia. I, just, I shot a lot of Velvia, but, but you know, portrait stuff. But because it's so great for skin tone. Yeah. But uh, yeah. never, never. Um, I've never shot this this emulsion. Yeah, I never shot slide. I've not never shot a lot of slide. I do have a bunch of it, but I don't remember shooting a lot of it. Um, most of what I shot, uh, no surprise, was black and white. Because I could process my own stuff. So exactly, exactly. It's very forgiving. But I do, I do love this. I I think that to fit into the nostalgic theme, though, I wish that this was in color, um, because that was kind of the time, you know, when we were able to have color film, and I think that it would be really cool to see this image in color and kind of muted tones, right? Like kind of what it would look like in a magazine ad at the time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we want to see that green but I wonder, that Fuji logo because we all remember that Fuji green on that logo. Yeah, I, I I wonder how that stuff would shoot today. You know, I mean, it's if it's that old because Joshua says he found it in a in an old bag, so that stuff's pretty old. So probably had some cool color shift in it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah, you should shoot it. Yeah, Joshua, if you got a film camera, shoot it. 
and process it. Let's see what it let's see what it can do. Especially with those ridiculously sharp lenses he has, you know? Yeah. Because you know, sharp lenses with with a uh, resolution was this two hundred, right? An old film. Let's see how it holds up to the resolution that you throw at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I do like the shot, though. It's very cool. We, maybe a little bit more depth in the image, you know, like skew the camera a little bit so we could see the the shape of the box. Mm -hmm. But yeah, put a critter on it. See, you should take this out in the out in the swamp and have a critter <laughs> a crawl critter over on. it. <laughs> put a critter on it. <laughs> Don't typecast Joshua. <laughs> if he wanted a critter on it, he would have put a critter on it. <laughs> Nice. Plug in my Mac here before it dies. All right. Moving on to the next shot here. Ernest. Hey, Ernest. Ernest says, the official moment, nostalgic look back at what was asked for by the client. This was my first and last time and was only done because they asked for it. Anyone else? Uh, uh, no, all the best. Okay. So he's being apologetic yeah. about his selective color treatment here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before you trash him on selective color as a <laughs> wedding shooter. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the uh, the detailed description and explanation. Of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, we first started getting into digital, especially. I had people asking for this, and I would tell them like, um, "No," but if you really want it done, I charge fifty dollars an hour to do Photoshop work, and nobody ever asked me to do it after that. So <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to do it. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I can't see. I can't see doing selective color, but it's fun. I mean, I went through a phase back in the day. This was in in the black and white when I was doing a lot of black and white printing. I remember doing shots of my then girlfriend holding a rose and making the rose red, you know, and everything else. Yeah, the rose red yeah. and her lips red, right? And it was, and this was with dyes, retouching dyes on the actual print itself. This wasn't. This was. Oh, I still have our Marshall. I, we still have our Marshall uh, colors kit. <clears throat> Remember, you know, you, you used to use the Marshall uh, dyes to, to tone the image. We still have that kit. <laughs> really? You should do some stuff with it, man. Come on. You're Mr. Tactile. Come on. No, because then I'd have to shoot film and I'd have to print it. I wouldn't have to shoot film, I guess. I would have to print it. Um, mm -hmm. And nah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> I do. I do love the image, by the way. I do. I do feel it's a fun play on nostalgia. And I do know that, you know, uh, having shot weddings for so long and having gone through this phase, um, it, it is fun to look at and it makes me cringe a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> you really did its job back in the days, back in the days. Yeah. yeah but now, now you've, you've graduated to doing the whole super in, in the superimposing of the ghosts of the parents in the sky with their faces in the clouds looking down on the bride and groom, right? Isn't that, isn't that like a signature right. Troy Miller? <laughs> You're like, no, no, it's not what no, we do. No, no, sorry. Not going there. Good. Well, you have taste or something? Come on. But this is yeah, this is cool. This is interesting. I, I especially love the I love the uh the the mea culpa, the preemptive mea culpa. It's like, yeah, this is nostalgic, but I did it at gunpoint. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. The 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 uh coloring, the selective coloring, and back in film it was the um the bride standing in front of a mirror. And one image had her in her dress in the mirror and the other one had her not in her dress doing a double exposure, kind of like her, you know, sort of dreaming about hers. I never did yeah. those either. I said, no. Hey, that's a good idea. Interesting. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We should just no, do no. that. You know, we should do that just to mess with you and have her maybe holding a tomato or something because we know you hate tomatoes. <laughs> You know, just because there's things that you can do doesn't mean there are things you should do ever. That's right. And that's Jeff one Goldblum. of them. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum, Jurassic Park 1. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And nature will find a way. That's right. She always finds a way. Clever yep. girl. Clever girl. All right. Next shot. Oh, that's it. That's I think all that's of our it. Shots. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, what do you think? Who's our, who's going to be the hero? Well, I sent you a text already of my pick. So 
I will see if it's the same one that, that, that you like. Wait, let me see. Let me pull it up here because I have like 15 computers are running in front of me. Oh, oh I yeah. can just tell you. Yeah, it's Ernest. Yeah, that, that, no, that wasn't Ernest. That was, who did that? Show? James. James. James Glennie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Let me pull it up. Yeah, that hit on all cylinders. Yeah, the on all nostalgic cylinders. That was a go for us. Yep. So yeah, I, I really like that. And I what I really like about it too is is um, it's very storytelling, and that it used the negatives. And I think that you know for photographers, our a lot of our subjects can be nostalgic. Some of our subject matter, but the fact that that film really is historical for us. It's where we started, whether we started there or, you know, we started in digital film is always in our past. So it's very nostalgic. So I agree. Yep. Very well. Yeah. And it's creatively done. Yep. Exceptional. Yep. Yep. Thank you, sir. Very well done. You are this week's favorite. Uh, what's next week? Next week, this was nostalgia. Um, last week we did open. Are we doing open again? Like, what's the? No, last week we did clouds. We did clouds. That's right. It was clouds. Do you? It's only been a week, dude. <laughs> Do you know how much happened in this past week, Troy Miller? <laughs> God, <laughs> God, I know. Have to, do I have to review with you how action packed this last week was? <laughs> I, I only remember. Because I have a spreadsheet <laughs> of everything right here. I can't remember. Are you kidding? I know. I know. I know. Um, so next week uh, will be open. It's our open category. I thought so. And yeah, I thought it was open. Yeah, and I posted in, I don't remember where it was. Somebody asked about um, what are the upcoming topics. So I did post that in, in Twit, but I can go ahead and run through them just to give you guys a sense <clears throat> of uh, what's coming up. So after open, we have sunset, then power, then airplanes, then abstract portraiture, and our final will be botanical. Hmm. So give you, give you a lot of different things to, to chase and play with in there. So botanical, for those of us that don't know what that word means... <laughs> flowers of course didn't we do flowers i thought we did botanical before uh we did flowers we did not do botanical botanical is a little bit more open um to things that grow it doesn't have to be flowers so really oh huh. okay i'll have to look that up i always in my brain always associates botanical with flora so but good all right learn something new every day right good all right um, ginger bearding Plants. Yeah. And ginger bearding, uh, he'll post the color in the community of his. I would love to see that. I think that that would be, I think that would be super fun to be able to yeah. see that. No, do the plants have to be alive or can it be, can it be things that come from plants like plant based? <laughs> what is, what is with you and your bizarre <laughs> twists of the topics? I'm, just, I'm trying to be, Stephen Sharp is wearing off on me. I'm trying to be precise and you know good good fences make good neighbors troy miller come on man just give us give us the parameters so we can play uh uh, uh, uh. no fences i don't like fences no fences uh, no you know fences. what my 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 traditional answer is you have to present it to us we have to interpret it so if you're too clever we're not going to get it because we're not that smart so no no we're not we are not. <laughs> All right. Well, cool, man. Well, good. This was a good critique. Congratulations, everyone. And thank you for, for submitting those yeah. awesome images. This was a fun one to go through. Uh, and that's James. You know. That's James's uh, first win. So that's nice. Oh, get him in there. Yeah, congratulations. Look at that. Awesome. All right. And next week, it's a free for all. So do what you yep. like. Yeah. Do what you like. Bring it. Show us what you want to what you want to show us. And um, yeah, that'll be good. I'm ex I'm excited that uh, that this is interesting. The the let me rephrase that. I'm excited to be streaming these because these make the critiques much more interesting with the involvement of the chat room and just sort of the live aspect to it. So again, shout out to uh, <clears throat> to Low Base Guy for the push to doing live streaming and stuff like that because without yeah. him, we'd probably still be recording these. So very cool. Yeah, yeah, and our life would be a little bit more relaxed, and there'd be less tension starting at twelve o'clock. <laughs> and, 
man, this com don't get me back on that Comcast train again. Comcast, you know, just messing with oh, my life here. Yeah. I'm, you know what? I am. I've been watching with interest uh, Elon Musk's Starlink project and the, the satellite based high speed anywhere internet access. If that thing gets out and is reliable and works, that again shifts everything because with the whole world kind of tasting what it feels like to not be location independent with the whole nine to five and remote work and all that. Stuff. Right. And then if, you know, which changes geography of work, because if you can work, if you can work from home most of the time, you don't have to live within a commuting distance of your job anymore. So that changes that. And I can buy a cheaper house that's further out. If Elon Musk thing, the Starlink project works as advertised, I could live out there where, where uh, Timber Geek lives if I wanted to <laughs> still yeah. do twin yeah. from anywhere. You know, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. So. And, and what I'm what I'm really looking forward to is the speed increase, because it's it's not just a little bit faster. It is significantly faster with more bandwidth and, and more load, which means cloud computing will happen. We'll, we'll no longer be buying computers just based on what we can get at Apple. It'll be more um, terminals and we'll be, you know, we'll be paying monthly for uh, uh, resources in the cloud. Like yeah. I, eventually we'll get to that point, but that's going to change how we work. You yeah, know, for hopefully sure. reliability goes up, yeah. <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. Yeah, well, these these software as a service based apps that that do things that do all this crazy stuff in the cloud, like even StreamYard, you know, that does all the processing in the cloud and you're operating exclusively through the browser. Those kinds of apps can get much more sophisticated now that sure. the bandwidth is not a constraint. Once that happens, then it changes everything. It's not, you know, it goes back to uh, you remember back in the the 90s, I think it was. Um, who was it? What's his name? Larry Ellison, um, Oracle, founder, CEO of Oracle uh, Database Com uh, Corporation. He uh, launched this com this company, I think it was called Network Computer NC. Their tagline was the network is the computer. And their whole proposition was we're going to do basically what they're doing back in the 60s with these network computers that are dumb terminals, essentially, that all their smarts are located in the cloud. They didn't use cloud back then, but it was the, you know, everything oh, was yeah. in the cloud and you have these dumb, cheap terminals that you get all your work done from. The problem back then was bandwidth. It was just the bandwidth wasn't there. And that was, the you know, so every nothing worked except for lightweight right. data applications like spreadsheets and word processing and stuff like that. Now, fast forward to today, 5G, Starlink, et cetera. These things get much more interesting. Handheld computers that can do crazy stuff, tablets, you know, with no bandwidth constraints and supercomputer processing capabilities on the device itself. I mean, we can do some sick stuff, right? So our kids are going right, to have fun. Right. We'll be we'll be long gone when it all gels, but <laughs> yeah, because it'll it'll take a long time for it to get to working. But you know, uh, good dog made a good point. Like one EMP in orbit will cut everybody off. Yeah. So <laughs> it, the more that we connect, I mean, like we watch. Am what was the Amazon S three went down last year sometime and took down like yep. half the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Swift was like, on Amazon S3. Yeah, every yeah, every yeah, that's scary. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Yeah, you know yeah. what if I'm waiting yeah, for my email, for my delivery? The, the email, the the Amazon Web Services stack is is large, right? And our email, the email that that or the email service that I use for the for the company, because our email list is, is rather large, it's untenable to have it on services like MailChimp or ConvertKit or Constant Contact, et cetera. It gets really expensive if you're not selling people stuff every five minutes, it becomes untenable. So yeah, to search for a solution that's more homegrown, and ours is homegrown run on WordPress using Amazon as the back end, which those services use as well. It's just kind of white labeled. But like you said, single point of failure. When Amazon takes a dump, email goes away, commerce processing goes away, hosting for de file delivery goes away. Everything just freezes. And yeah. It's, yeah. So it's scary. Very scary. Yeah. 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 yeah Work picks 360 says pull out the Commodore 64. <laughs> hey, yeah. oh, you were yeah. one of those rich kids. I had a Vic 20, man. What do you say? <laughs> You remember that? You remember the Vic 20? Are you too young for that? 
I I don't. I I don't know. I don't remember ever playing with one of those. I had a Tandy um, same yeah computer. Same era. Same era. Yeah, the radio show. Yeah. 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 The tape recorder yeah. with the tape deck. You know, yep, the trash yeah, the Rick Cowboy says the TRS yeah. eighty. We called them the trash eighty. We had a our computer lab in school was full of the trash eighties in there. That's where yep. I learned basic programming at on a trash eighty. Yeah. Yeah. All right, if well, cool. this then that. Yep. Yeah, if this then that go sub with return. Um yep. uh we'll leave it right there. So next week's yeah. topic is open. So like Troy said, do, what, do whatever you want, have fun with it. We'll be right here like clockwork again uh, next Monday or the, a week from today. And we will talk about the open critique. Uh, if you are a Twit Pro member, we will see you hopefully Friday at 6 p.m. U.S. Pacific time. So please join us in those. All the details are in the events area within the community. You know where to find that. And uh, yeah, come on in, hang out with us, have a drink and uh you know, those aren't recorded on purpose anymore so that it is the cone of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Mainly because of uh, Peter Levshin, right? <laughs> Some of us are more opinionated than others and recording it's not healthy. <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, and it's a more free a free conversation with no, with no record of the conversation. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. All right, Stephen Sharp, you're welcome. Thank you, everybody, for coming into this critique again. And we will see you folks next week. All right. Peace. Yep. This is Twitter.